Remain standing. Good morning, everybody. I want to lead us off with this March celebration. We're celebrating women. Somebody say amen. amen. Give the women a hand clap of praise. I don't know about you, but I have Catherine Mother uh, here and my wife. They are just two dynamic women in my life. And then you can just think whether it's your mother, whether it's your Grandmother, just, you can say their name out loud if you like, but just give them a hand clap of praise for the influence that they've had upon us. You know, even the mothers that have been mothers to other children, think about that in all of the ways that you've sustained us. And so what we're going to do, I believe in first celebrating our present, and we're going to go back in time with some biblical characters to different things this morning, and this is going to be a fun month, and just look for a parade of extraordinary women coming before you. So give them a hand clap of praise again. And I want to call up a dynamic woman at this time, Sister Carla, come on up. Good morning, you can be seated. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Zor family. It is so good to be out in the house of the Lord on today. What a beautiful day it is today. And as Pastor said today, I want you guys to remember that this is Women's Month. The month of March is to celebrate all women. And we want to lift up the female voice this month. And during the month of March, we'll have several uh, women speaking. Next month, our own Olivia will be speaking and giving the word. And also following her the following Sunday will be Shante Hauser, which is from Genesis Outreach Program. And in following that, um, end of the month will be a Mary and Martha Mead rash to my own Olivia um, and Lauren as well. So don't forget this Saturday. I can't believe it's time already. It is time to turn those clocks ahead. I'm a little disappointed because I'm not ready to lose an hour of sleep. I kind of cling on to that a little bit, so my body is trying to adjust to it. Um, so hopefully you guys will remember because we don't want to be late. We want to, I'll be here to celebrate and support our own Olivia uh, for her word that she's going to give on next month. If you will look into your bulletin on the tab portion for me, well, my bulletin doesn't have it, but if you open up your bulletin here, here's the tab portion of your bulletin. Um, on one side, you can sign up for the upcoming community yard sale, which is going to be held Saturday the 26th. So if you, your neighbors or your friends or anybody that you might know, uh, they can come in and rent space to sell some items. Uh, to rent a space is $25 to do that. And all the proceeds are going to go towards our outreach ministry. So if there's someone that you might know that might benefit or have something to sell the craft, we encourage you all to... Uh, come and reserve a booth. We'll also have food trucks that'll be here during that time. Chef Hank Reeves will be here in our outreach, outreach ministry, let them eat. So I'm looking forward to that because of all of you know, I love to eat and you know, our Methodists do as well, right? <laughs> That's how we show our love. Also, um, I want you guys to remember on the task force tonight, I told you guys um, 
want to go ahead and fill that, that portion out and let us know that you're here today. You can fill your name out and there's an area for you to volunteer for upcoming events as well. And if you have any prayer requests or any praise reports that you want to put on the bulletin and want to share, uh, we, we invite you to do that as well on today. So without further ado, I am super excited. I had the pleasure on yesterday doing our Faith Fun and Everyone with the United Methodist Women. Uh, we had a program on yesterday, and I was so blessed to have Olivia and Lauren to be a part of that as well. And they were able to do the, uh, the midrash of Ruth and Naomi. So we have the pleasure on today to be able to see it live and in person. They're going to do it for their family, our Zoe family on today. So without further ado, I'm going to step out of the way and invite uh, Lauren and Olivia to give us uh, part one of Ruth and Naomi's Midrash. Doing okay? Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna go freshen up. I feel like I have a hundred pounds of dust on my face after that journey. This, this was not supposed to be my life. No, this was not how it was supposed to go. last few years have been so hard. There's been so much fighting. And oh my goodness, the food shortages. It's like you can't get anything. And the, the death. So much death. I mean, it doesn't matter how strong you are. My husband and my sons, they were really strong, but that illness didn't care. So I was left alone. Well, almost alone. I have my daughter-in-law who, well, my daughter, who's really my daughter-in-law, who's a widow, so I guess that makes her my daughter and widow-in-law. That'll work. But, but it's, it's just, just us. us. I had to come back here, my home, Bethlehem, because even though I made a beautiful home and was able to raise my beautiful children there, once my son and husband died, I had nothing. My name meant nothing. I had no land. The house wasn't mine. So I have nothing. I had to leave that home that I built to come back to where I grew up. There's a reason why I left that place. But here we are back in Bethlehem. We've spent our very last pennies on this dump. It might as well be a manger. I have no name. No skills. No man. I have a foreigner for a daughter-in-law who I'm traveling with. My life was not supposed to be this way. I don't want to let you see me now. Just call me Nora. So 
now that we're here, what do we do? I hadn't really thought that far. <laughs> um, I don't. I don't even know who we could talk to. I don't. It's been so long since I've been here, and you know, given the situation, I'm not even sure anybody that I know would have received me. Why wouldn't they receive you? Forget I said anything, Betty. Ma'am, why? I'll be right back. But why wouldn't they receive you? I'm, I'm worried about her. I mean, I, I'm just worried about her. I mean, she welcomed me into her family when others wouldn't. I mean, oh my goodness, like, why would I want to lose her too? I had just lost my whole world. I had lost my husband. Like, everything was upside down. Why would I want to lose her too? I didn't want to lose her, and I don't want to lose her. I mean, she welcomed me, a Moabite, a foreigner, into her family with open arms. That just doesn't happen. Like, other people, majority of people wouldn't have treated me with such, with such kindness as she has and continues to show me. I, I, I can't imagine my life without that woman. I, I'm just beyond thankful that the Lord of her people has brought us together. A little better? A little. Thank you. So, I mean, I know we're starting a new life. We, we can't start a new life on an empty stomach. We're going to need to eat. Um, I saw when we were coming into town, there was a, you know, big, shiny building, lots of people buzzing around. So I was going to go down there and, and see if they have any work I can do. That is so honorable, my daughter. And I love that you want to take care of us. I do, I am very concerned about your safety. You are a beautiful woman, but a foreigner. And I don't, I don't understand it. I, but there are people who will look at you and they'll just hate you just because of that. It doesn't matter how long we've gotten along. It doesn't matter how our countries act. There are still people out there that are going to act that way towards you. So if, when you go out, I want you to be so very careful. Please promise me. I will. I'll, I'll be very careful, and I'll go straight there and come straight back, okay? Okay. All right. I'll be back soon. Okay. Give them a hand clap of praise. Bear with us, and this is any blame, just put it on me. I'm okay with that. We're going to truncate the congressional hymn, and we're going to go straight to the responsive reading. This is our initial uh, debut of this, and you see we have three acts to deal with. So at this time, prepare for the responsive reading. Sister Carla. If you would turn um, in your hymnal to hymnal um, 883, hymnal 883. Give me an amen when you're ready. All right. We'll read it together. We're not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works with us, others, by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Also, do we have time to read the response reading? Um, yes. 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 Y
I mean, not the response to reading, but the. Uh, Okay, meet rest too. Okay. Hmm. It certainly has been. A minute. I hope she's safe. I hope she gets back soon. Gosh. Hello. Uh, hello. I'm so glad you're back and safe. Well, I, I did exactly what you said. Well, what I promised that I would do. That you know, I went there and came straight back. But guess what? What? I, I, you know, I went down and before I went in, I straightened myself up and I walked up to the reception desk and I introduced myself and I said, "Do you have any work I can do?" And guess what? They did. Oh, praise the Lord. So I am now the newest employee. At Boaz Incorporated. Did you say Boaz? Yeah. I mean, he supplies all the grain in the area. It's it's kind of a big deal. And what's even better is he put me on a team of all women. So that means that I'll clean up after the main crew, and anything they drop or leave behind, I get to bring home. I mean, look how much I brought just for for today. Boaz, right? Yeah. You, did you know that we have a close relative named Boaz? He's, he's in a Limowitz clan. Yeah, I met him. When I was cleaning up, he was kind and righteous and blessing everyone in his path. And I mean, he must be pretty well connected because he knew all about our travels. And I mean, we literally just got here. He is in extremely well connected. Clearly. Yeah. Your daughter, this might be a very good thing for us indeed. Right, we have food. Indeed. Indeed. And it will continue on. Oh, daughter, we have certainly been very, very, very blessed. Yes, we have. Praise the Lord. Would mind um, joining me in, in the reading of the New Testament, Luke 4, uh, verse 1 through 13. If you're using your pew Bible, it is page 61. As I was studying the word, um, reading the word for this chapter, I decided to go with the Amplified Bible this morning. So bear with me. I'm going to drop my glasses here. Oh, don't have them in there. I thought it was important to read this from the Amplified. Bible this morning, so I'm going to pick up the Bible just a little bit so I can fit a little bit better, so bear with me a little bit. And it's verse 4, 1 through 13. Then Jesus, full and controlled by the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led in by the Holy Spirit for doing 40 days in the wilderness desert where he was tempted, tried, tested exceedingly by the devil. And he ate nothing during these days, and when they were completed, he was hungry. Then the devil said to him, if you are the son of man, order this stone to turn into a loaf of bread. And Jesus replied to him, it is written, man should not live and be sustained by our own bread alone, but by every word and expression of God. Then the devil took him up to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the habitation of the world in a moment's time, in a twinkling of an eye. Oops, lost my place. And he said to him, to you, I will give all this power and authority and the glory. All there is magnificent, excellence, prominence, dignity, and grace. But it has been turned over to me, and I will give it to whomever I will. Therefore, if you will do homage and worship me just once, just once, 
It's all yours. And Jesus replied to him, get behind me, Satan. It is written, you shall do homage and to worship the Lord your God only. And you shall serve him and serve him only. Then he took him to Jerusalem and set him on a gable of the temple and said unto him, if you are the son of God, cast yourself down from there. For it is written, he will give his angels charge to guard you and watch over you closely and carefully. And on their hands, they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. And Jesus replied to him, the scriptures say, you shall not tempt thy Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended everything, the complete cycle of temptation, he temporarily left him. And until another more opportune time and favorable time. The word of God for the people of God. Amen. All right, we will follow up now. Pastor will come and give us the offertory prayer. Thank you, church. Say amen. amen. Two quick notes before the ushers come. One, um, I want you to notice last month was uh, Black History Month. And we celebrated it a little differently. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because we live in the dream. We're at a church that lives the dream. When you look around and how we interact with each other, I said, well, we're doing it every Sunday. We do it every time we get together. So we're living the dream. We're an example of what this world ought to look like. Somebody say amen. amen. And that's a beautiful and honorable thing. Look. You don't get along with everybody in your family, so you're not going to get along with everybody, but we put our best foot forward. Amen? So I definitely wanted to highlight that. Flip to the back of your program. We have four special people, unless there's somebody else in the audience that's not on the list. Let's just tell them happy birthday for the March birthday. Say happy birthday. Happy birthday. Amen, amen. Uh, is it anybody else that's not on the list that's birthday is in March? Seeing none, I want you to prepare uh, for what you have been doing. And God knows we thank you for the strength financially of this church. Um, I thank the leadership for working through the budget and doing all that they can. And it's just a marvelous thing um, what happens here. Again. We're living the dream, which is a beautiful thing. Ushers, come on forward. Look, look, look at that. Here's another example. Look at this young fellow uh, that's coming down this aisle that's an usher today. Amen, amen. Coach, Coach Mike, you drafted somebody else for us this morning. <laughs> all right, if you all would get ready to, let's pray if you lift our offering. Lord Jesus Christ, we just thank you. We lift before you empty trays, knowing that you have all power to fulfill these trays, that this great church of yours, Zoe UMC of Snellville, can fulfill your mission, can fulfill your purpose of making disciples of all nations. Lord, help us to continue to be the heart of this great community, creating us a clean heart. Oh, we just thank you, Lord. We ask you to have mercy on us. Renew our storehouses. Expand the favor the, for those that are on fixed income. Those that are seeking new employment, Lord, open up doors for them. And Father, if the first doesn't come, let them get back up again, Lord, because you'll never leave them or forsake you. We just thank you, Lord, for being in the land of the living. In Jesus' name, amen.
time to get prepared for part three, after which uh, will be Lauren will do the pastoral prayer, and I just want to put her in mind of the Ukrainian war that's going on, the devastation and slaughter of lives, and just again reiterate knowing how valuable liberty, somebody say liberty, say liberty, say freedom ain't free. Oh, God knows, we just thank you for being in America and the help that we are able. She is the prayer warrior for Monday night, so she will uh, take care of many of the prayers as she can. Give them a hand clap of praise. Let them know how much you love them as they come forth. How was work? It was that good, huh? Mm -hmm. I'll let you get situated. It's warm out today. Yeah, it, it is a little warm out today. Yeah. Uh, I Work is good, just it's the end of the year harvest, so things are crazy. Oh, I bet. But, uh, I mean, I heard there's a celebration tonight to celebrate the plentiful harvest, you know, like free food and drinks for the workers and stuff. Mm-hmm. I've heard about those. Oh. Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. They've got a reputation. Y yeah, I've, I've uh, heard about said reputation. Mm -hmm. But, you know, end of harvest is, is definitely a time for us to be thankful and celebrate. But it also means the end of our food supply and your job. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. Yeah. Daughter, do you trust me? Yeah, of course. Good. Um, I'm going to ask you to go wash and anoint yourself and get your nicest cloak out. Yeah. Why? Because you and my daughter are going to that celebration. You, you just said you know the reputation of those parties. Like, Hosea was very clear. I did, and I know what Hosea said. But I want you to get into the... Please sit down. Please. What are you I, up to? I, you... I have a story. I have a backstory, but you need to come sit. Oh, brother. Okay. All right. So. Daughter. Harvest. This is the time that we knew would come. And... Yes, I'm sending you in to the celebration. But there is a good purpose. Because remember when we first got here, I told you that it, we're in a very unique situation. Well, really, it's I'm in a unique situation because when we came here, and I had no sons, that, that put a a burden on the family, shall we say. And they owe me a son. 
but it's not like this body is going to be delivering it. So you, my daughter, are young enough, and you can do it. Who am I tomorrow? Well, I mean, yeah. So here's the thing, okay? Boaz, he is our closest relative. It means he's a redeemer. It means that he can take care of us. But he's a bit obtuse and has not been picking up on any of the signals that I've been dropping over the last couple months. So what is going to happen tonight is that you're going to get him to recognize all of those symbols and all of those signals. And he's going to recognize that he can't live without you. I'm not sure I can do that. I mean, he's, well, he's kind of ugly and he's old. Um, that, that may be true. That may be true. But you also said that he is kind and generous. I mean, the very first day you walked in and you said, oh my goodness, he walked in and he blessed everyone. I mean, how much more righteous can you get? True. So, what I want you to do is make Boaz recognize that he can't live without you. And how, pray tell, am I supposed to do this? By using what the good Lord gave you, honey. I mean, it is really the only tool we have. It's the only thing we have available to us. I'm crazy. Uh, I've never claimed to be anything <laughs> but. <laughs> All right. What do I need to do? Okay. So first and foremost, your safety and your honor is the most important thing. That's where the cloak comes in. You are going to stay hidden. You're going to wrap yourself in that cloak. And you're going to stay hidden. And you're going to wait for Boaz to party himself out. Because he is going to celebrate because it's his harvest, right? So he's going to celebrate and probably celebrate hard. And then he's going to wander off on his own. And that's where you're going to meet him. You're going to wait until he's alone. And then I want you to walk up to him. And I'd like you to uncover, uncover his feet. His feet. His feet. Ah, so that's what we're calling it now, feet. How about you ask him to cover, him, for him to cover you with his wings? Feet and wings. Yeah. Or, or you could ask him to dip his bread in your wine. I'm glad to see you've kept current with the times. I have to stay young somehow. Feet, wings, and the wine. And the wine. Don't forget the wine. Yeah, of course. I can't forget that. No. No. Are you clear? Uh, yeah, I, I, think, I think I caught it all. Okay. 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 So, go wash. Go anoint yourself. Put on that cloak. Stay safe. But you are our future. No pressure, huh? No pressure. All right, well. You can um, do this. I'm off. Okay. Wow. I didn't expect the sun to come up. It must have been a good celebration indeed. I hope she makes it home soon. I hope she doesn't get seen. That's what that black cloak is for. That black cloak is, doesn't really work in the daytime. Goodness. 
Well, welcome home and good morning. Oh, good morning. So what'd you bring? Grain? Is that all? There's some seeds in there. Seeds are good. Yeah. Yeah. How'd it go? Oh my goodness. That was a night. How was the celebration? Was it everything Hosea said it would be? <laughs> I guess this is the first one. <laughs> Uh, so I did what you said, and I waited till he partied himself out, and I didn't quite get to him before he fell asleep. Goodness. So I laid next to him and uncovered his feet, as you're calling it, and I waited, and I waited, and good grief, I waited some more. He finally turned over. And I accidentally startled him awake. <laughs> Whoops. It's like, who are you? I was like, um, hi. Oh, like, I would have loved to have seen his face. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it was. It was priceless. I bet it was. It, it was good. <laughs> Remember, he's old. That would have been great. <laughs> I, I was just that bad and give him a heart attack. Right. Well, uh, but he said he's going to do it. But the Lord. he said there's a redeemer closer than him, that he's going to go down to the gate this morning and, and talk to him. I, I don't want the other redeemer. I want it to be Boaz. Daughter, let's not worry about that. Our Lord has certainly blessed us so far. And if I know anything about Boaz, he is not going to rest until he gets his way. You want to go down to the gate? Yeah. All right. Okay. Yeah. We have certainly been blessed just like Rachel and Leah. Look at this little bundle that the Lord has blessed us with. Oh, no. This cute little Obed. Uh, actually, I was thinking of calling him Jesse. Oh, no. I think we call him Obed. That means servant to the Lord. You are going to have a long and wonderful line ahead of you, my little Obed. I think Obed fits. What a blessing, what a blessing, what a blessing on today. You know, let's not forsake this midrash on today. And I just want to tell you how much of a blessing this has. I want to give you guys a quick little story about these midrash. Uh, Lauren did one last year on the Mother of Mary, and I had the pleasure of having my grandkids here. And they were so excited after seeing that, because you wouldn't think that this would resonate, resonate with the young kids. They could not wait to get home. You know what they said? I saw the Mother of Jesus. <laughs> It does resonate, and we thank you both so much. We just want to show you love and want to give you praise this morning. <laughs> wonderful job, wonderful job. Wow. So now we're going to have the pastoral prayer about our own Lauren bed, and then we'll have Pastor come up and give us a word. All right. 
Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful day, for the opportunity to be in your house, to fellowship, and to just simply be together in your presence. Lord, we thank you for this time, and we just lift up uh, things going on around this world. Lord, there is a lot of unrest and unease. There's uncertainties for so many people and so many areas. Lord, we just lift them up to you. We pray your hand on them, that you will um, give the leaders wisdom and discernment and a sound mind, that you will give the people who are fleeing or who are staying in place courage and guidance of where to go to, um, to be safe and to protect their families, Lord. Lord, we just thank you that you are a God that is able to do abundantly more than we can even imagine or ask for, and we just ask that now on these situations. And Lord, please guide us in our personal lives. Please teach us and um, just lead us, Lord. Help us to be lights in our community and in our circles of influence. Help us, Lord, to uh, just spread your word. And Lord, we also just pray for your protection. We know that there is both seen and unseen forces in our daily lives. And we just pray, Lord, for your guidance and your direction. Lord, help us to keep your promises and commandments at the forefront of our mind and to meditate on those mom uh, moment by moment so that when the good times come or the hard times or the unbelievable, I don't know how I'm going to get through this times come, we know your promises and we know where our foundation and our security is, Lord. Lord, we thank you for this time together. We ask that you will please continually guide us and bless us so that we may be powerful agents in this world for you and your kingdom. We ask this in your son's most precious and holy name. Amen. Amen. One sermon title that could be given for that wonderful story is Don't Despise Small Beginnings because you've got Obadad, Jesse, David, Solomon, 14 generations later, who do we get? Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. So uh, pay attention to what God is doing in your life. Um, turn in your Bible very briefly to St. Luke. Chapter 4, verse 18. We're going to briefly address discipleship. And like all good disciples, we first understand a bit about the vision and mission of the objective. And um, as a disciple, you're a follower of Jesus Christ. So looking at St. Luke chapter 4, if you have it, go ahead and please stand. This, these words are echoing Isaiah, prophet Isaiah, so we've, we've studied two instances where the Lord himself admonished us to lean on scripture. For example, after his 40-day fast and slew foot, the devil came unto him. He rebuked him with the word of God, and at the beginning here of his ministry, he defined it very clearly through the prophet Isaiah. St. Luke chapter 4, verse 18, whatever version you have, you'll find these words. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of the sight to set at liberty them that are bruised. So a recovering of sight to the blind. You may be seated. So we see here we have an anointing, we have a healing, a deliverance, 
a recovery, and a liberty. And if you were to gaze mentally, cognitively upon those words, you'll find that in every situation, you're going to need the anointing, you're going to need a healing, you're going to need a deliverance, and you're going to need to recover, and you're going to need freedom. You're going to need liberty. Somebody say amen. So it is our mission, our duty to exercise our rights and liberty to be disciples. Somebody say amen. amen. Let me make it plain, though. Once you said Jesus is my Lord and Savior, you don't have to lift another finger. It's, that's the mercy of our Lord. Amen? But it seems like that when you realize what he's done for you, somebody say amen. Because I don't know about you, but I might have told a white lie just yesterday. Somebody say amen. I might have got mad at somebody and shouldn't have been early this morning. You've done something and will continue to do things that are not pleasing in his sight. Nevertheless, his goodness is and mercy is such that he forgive us through the complete work of Jesus Christ. So when we started delving into discipleship, it, it, it is about being a learner and follower of Jesus Christ. And we have to take into account our state or condition as being the follower of Christ. It's a Christian order kind of thing. Jesus said in Matthew 10:38. And he that taketh not his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. Or Matthew 16, 24 said, Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Paul admonished his followers, he said in 1 Corinthians 11, 1, Be ye followers of me even as I also am of Christ. So as Christian leaders, and remember, when we get into the root word of uh, disciple, and we, 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 we end up building on discipline. Say discipline. It takes discipline to be a good Christian. It takes discipline to give up something for Lent. It takes discipline to weekly, daily attempt to search the scriptures because this, when you put this ship on the end of a word, it, it, it takes on a state of condition. It takes on a skill or ability to, to do the thing, or it's about the position, the status, and the duty. Make no mistake about it, Christian. Everybody in your community know you're professed to be a Christian. Say Amen. And with that comes some duties and some responsibilities. So you have to have the discipline to not do what you used to do. Say amen. I'm not telling you that the urge is not going to come, but I'm telling you that Jesus Christ sent the comforter. Say comforter. We can't do it, Sister Olivia. We can't do it, Sister Carla. Uh, Eleanor, we can't do it unless we allow the anointing of the comforter which is the Holy Spirit. You know, the world would say intuition, sixth sense, that still small voice. But listen, you can try to drown it out if you want to, but it's still going to speak. And if you learn to trust in that comforter, which gets us back to this anointing that happens. You see, what is prayer all about? Prayer is getting your heart and your mind and your life in a aligned state with the way Jesus Christ operated. That's why at the end of the prayer we say amen, which means and so it is, but what we are professing is that I'm going to get it right and get right with Jesus. I'm going to line it up with Jesus. So you can't keep on dipping and hiding and slicker than a can of oil and expect your prayers to be answered. So it takes this anointing which gives you this ability to move above your emotions, to mortify your flesh so that you can receive your healing. How many know this old life, this old world will get you in some situations you can't get out of by yourself? Somebody say amen. So there'll be times like a 
Ukraine, these people need a deliverance. Say amen. You know, it may look bad to you and some people don't understand it. They say, well, how is it then, this God being a good God, if he allow all this evil to exist again and again? I tell you, it's the purpose of sin in this world. And as long as sin is in this world, they're going to be perverted and evil men and women that are going to do these destructive things. So what I want Christians to do is understand that they are in a recovery. And a part of that recovery is for you to understand that these things are going to happen. Remember I said we're in the middle of two ages. Christ has come and done all things, but there's an age to come. And that age to come is where every heart is going to get right. So there's a restoring and there's a recovering that happens in our heart, and we are able to do the right thing. So don't fret not thyself in well-doing it. Stop getting upset when you think that evil person is prospering or doing better than you. You just keep on taking your time because the liberty that you have, the liberty that you have in Jesus is far greater than any silver or gold. Anything that you can think, he says, is above more than you can ask or think. Think about that and we consider ourselves intellectual. More than you can ask or think is his riches, his riches of mercy. And always remember as I get ready to close, no matter what happens in your life, losing a loved one, having to deal with a procedure, young child gone, uh, gone astray, death in the family, it's all for the furtherance of the gospel. And these things Paul teaches us, uh, uh, what undergirds them of the invisible thing. So when you get caught on the temporal things, your world can be rocked and shaken. You see, we ought to be like the Ukrainian people in the sense that we're ready to take up our cross and march and do what's due. But I guarantee you, like that one that was speaking with Jesus when he was lining up the disciples, me included, we have to say, now, can I go take care of this first, Lord? But see, life will put us, Sister Lauren, in positions where we don't have that choice. But it ought to be our nature that when we get to that point, get to that point where we realize how important these things are, that the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, he's Lord of the Sabbath. He's Lord of all things. He's Lord of your healing. He's Lord of confusions. He's over it all. And that's finally, as I say before I close, I want us to understand you can get mixed up looking at TV and get to thinking it's a cosmic battle between good and evil. God is bigger than the devil and he's bigger than evil. He's outside of that. You see, that's how you get a little twisted. It's not even about that. The Bible teaches you even the day of evil. Is for the furthers of his plan. We can't understand it. As some of those folks that went through that terrible hurricane Katrina, you can see them interview and they say, it's the best thing that ever happened to my life. I might have went into another second and third generation in the project had I not been shaken at the core. Let's continue to pray for this senseless, evil war and bind that man, that strong man, Prayers will pull him down. We already made a little onslaught with him. We're going back to prayer again because it is senseless killing. And as disciples, discipline in our following of Jesus Christ, do we have to have compassion for injustice? And like Martin Luther King says, injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere. Remember, we are connected. Methodists call it our connection. We pull from the lectionary and things like that because we, we connect with the Methodists across this nation and this world. Christians can't do it without community. Part of your discipleship is to love ye one another as Christ loved you. God bless you.
Holy Communion with me, please, and uh, prepare your hearts. And I think we've done well. I pride myself on being nimble and uh, doesn't have anything to do with how, how much you weigh, y'all. I'm, I'm nimble, though. <laughs> and great job, ladies. Thank you for your dedication. Um, we can get through 12 in your hymn book because this is one of those sacraments. We dealt with uh, means of grace and works of papi piety and works of mercy, and this is the sacrament. And if you study Paul, you understand that with his death, his burial, death, and uh, resurrection, we receive all this, and when we take, have taken baptism and communion, we, 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 we're receiving all of that. So... In other words, let me say it this way. Your restoration of recovery is up to you. You can be instantly saved and holier than thou, or like me, you can have this gradual, steady walk with Christ. Amen? But it's, it's available. The power is there already. If you found uh, page 12, signify by saying amen. Here's the invitation to all. And no one needs a communion. Everybody has one, right? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin, and to seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Pray silently for yourself and your discipleship, this world, this church, our community, and our leaders. Here, the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love towards us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Let us offer one another signs of reconciliation and love. As forgiven, as forgiven and reconciled people, let us offer ourselves and our gifts to God. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is good and it is joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you. Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you, and blessed is your son Jesus Christ by the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection. You gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciple, and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from all of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. 
And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mysteries of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ come in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with confidence of the children of God, let us pray the Lord's Prayer. The body of Christ given for you. Church, the blood of Christ given for you. Zoa, go forth in peace. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Hmm? Say it again. Okay, let's go back up. And let me clarify it here. When I started doing communion, and I like, I used to do communion from the Bible itself. And so it was important to me to pray. And when I got here, I prayed right at that point. But if we go by the hymnal, we take communion after the bread breaking and the lifting of the cup. And when we say the body of Christ, this is when you receive it. So to be technical, that's the mode. So let's do that again. This is an example of why we always will need Christ. Amen. So I have the bread which represent the body of Christ. And he gave thanks, is the way Jesus did it. Lord, I just thank you for this, your body that was broken, for these, your people, for the redemption of their sins, the forgiveness of their iniquity. And Lord, with your stripes, we became healed. Lord, today we receive this in all fullness and abundance, exceedingly abundantly, more than we can think or ask. Please, the body of Christ, receive it. Then he took the cup. And remember, we came from Old Testament and blood had to be shed, but Christ realized, the Father realized that a bull, a, do a, a, a dove, it would replace the sin of man. So Christ's blood, once and for all, totally done, was shed for us. And after they had sucked, then he gave thanks to the blood, which was the fruit of the vine. Lord, we just thank you for the shedding of your blood. Lord, you said you wouldn't receive it again until we're in the new kingdom, until you're coming again. So today we just receive it. We are free. We have liberty. We have been delivered from our sin. And we just thank you in Jesus' name. The blood of Christ 
is given for you. Please receive. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saves a wretch like me. I was, was lost, but now I'm found, was blind, but now I see. You know why that was so important? Because it's important to see men and women of God adjust and learn how to get back up. We're not perfect, amen? And we have to accept that and the more, see, but it's not a lessening of excellence. I strive for excellence, you better believe it, but we just have to get back up again. And when life throws us that curveball, old fashioned, just make lemonade out of it. The devil wants you all twisted. I got this procedure, I got to go through. Why me? My child won't act right, why me? Sometimes you have to be able to look trouble in the eye and say, why not me? God must believe I'm strong enough to deal with it, or else it wouldn't have happened. God, I thank you for trusting in me. Glory to God. I know through your anointing and your Holy Spirit, I'm going to walk right through this fire. And like Daniel in the lion's den, I'm going to lay down and make that old lion my pillow. Somebody say glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, I'm not what I used to be, but I ain't what I'm going to be if I keep on trusting in him. Amen? All right, I'll follow. I'll follow. Where you go, I'll go. Where you stay, I'll stay. Where you move, I'll move. I will follow. All your ways are good, all your ways are sure. I will trust in you alone, higher than my sight, high above my life. I will trust in you alone, in you alone. When you go, I'll go, when you stay, I'll stay, when you move, I'll move, I will follow.
Amen, amen. I, I just want to say, Mr. Jefferson, thank you for uh, caller this morning, and I want you to know if you hadn't got back in this church, I was coming to get you. Same thing for you, Sister Novus. I'm getting all kinds of reports where you're working and so forth, so you, you just better be watching. You better get that calendar cleared out so you can be here. <laughs> Good having the uh, Willie and Sister Susan back. Give him a hand for 33 marathons, 33 marathons in 33 states. And his goal is to hit all 50 states. And look, look at that old bearded man back there. The Freemans are back. And thank you and hope you enjoyed your little time away. But don't you stay away too long either. Amen. Amen. Say what? That? Oh, yes, Lord. Okay, quickly. Uh, sit down. That's right. I love you, too. Uh, what I want to do, I know we, we did good considering all we have to do, but one of our own is about to go, uh, undergo. Yes, I just want to say it very slow because we're claiming victory over this chemo procedure. And if she's not here, I want to make it plain. And you come see me if I have any trouble. If she's going to try to get back. But that medicine makes you a little sleepy. So if she nod off, if any of y'all look at her the wrong way, you're going to have to deal with me. Say amen. And if she starts snowing like the pastor would snow if he was asleep, you're going to have to deal with me. So let's just lay hands on and pray for her. Oh, God of salvation, Lord of mercy, we do realize that you've already taken into consideration this, your daughter of Zion. Lord, we ask you to be with her during this procedure. And Lord, we ask you to continue to look after those that are on our sick and shut in. Lord, you know their names, those that just got back from emergency room, those that had rough nights, and those that are still battling chemotherapy. You know every heart, every name, and every mind. But I ask you to bring her back safely and sound. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, okay, okay. I'm coming, y'all. We did good. Give yourselves a hand. Thank you. Thank you. She is so wonderful. Stand to your feet. If you had a good time in the Lord, say amen. amen. You got a, a little bit of things going, and that was just exciting. Receive these words. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Trifle, amen.